Hi, Zizarin here with another video for the upcoming 3.18 Sentinel League. And this video is going to be about loads of tips and tricks for a new league started starting strong. And we also have a lot of recipes and stuff like that that new players might not know about. Just want to give you a little bit of a head start on Sentinel. So, if you're new to Path of Exile, what you may not know is that Path of Exile has loads of vendor recipes. First, let's talk about adding spell damage to a wand. What you need for this is you need a blue wand, and then you need a white, yellow, or blue ring, and an alteration. So now, this is making a ring with lightning damage, and more importantly, requires level 12. You can see you have a blue wand, a white ring, and an alteration. If I swap this white ring out with a blue ring, now it'll be, um, those are blue sapphire ring, it'll be cold damage instead of lightning, and it'll be a required level 14. The highest you can craft like this is level 20, and now you can see that it's 3 to 46 lightning damage. So this is a great way to get a large amount of damage early on. Normally players will do it at level 12 and again at level 20, and they can last you all the way until maps. Later on, if you find regals while leveling, it's not always a bad idea, especially if it's something the lead mechanic is giving a lot, like for example in Ultimatum, where if you have a lot of regals, you can regal a one like this and then just craft spell damage. Then it's easily enough to get you into tier 3 to 4 maps. Another good tip people don't always know about is that you can turn iron rings into either ruby, you can turn them into sapphire rings, or you can turn them into topaz rings, depending if you do a red, a blue, or a green gem. Another recipe that's very good is for like melee or bow users, anything that needs physical damage. So here we have a blue rustic belt or a rare rustic belt. And obviously we use blue and yellow, etc. interchangeably. But with this recipe and whatever rarity weapon and a whetstone, you can make it with, uh, with the blue belt. It'll be this tier. So that's between 40 and 49% damage. And with the rare belt, it'll be 50 to 64% damage. And you can even use this. Say, let's say you found three or four random essences. Maybe you threw a contempt essence on and it didn't really hit anything. You didn't get flat physical and percentage physical. Then you can just recraft it like this. So it's a very, very um, good thing. It does not work with white belts. And as opposed to the, uh, the wand recipe, this doesn't have like an increased item level. Now, this is another interesting recipe and this is for bow users. So sometimes it can be a pain with stats and stuff early on on a bow build. And then this recipe comes in handy. You need a shark tooth arrow quiver, a orb of chance, a rare onyx amulet. And then you need a 1% at least quality rain of arrows. It could be more if you find one. But normally you will just find a early gem cutter prism. And then you can use and, and make a high res bite. So really, really good. It gives you a lot of stats some attack speed, and some cold damage. So for example, for Elemental Equilibrium for a champion build, this isn't bad. Now, obviously you can get kind of more useful rare quivers, but it's worth mentioning anyway. Other than that, in the first few levels of leveling a caster, checking your vendor to see if there's any plus one gem level ones can be really, really good. Remember that vendors will reset what they sell at every level, and you can craft stats on white items. And this is incredibly important because that means that the only thing I really look at at the start of a league is what sockets are on the items. They like, are more likely to be running around with um, basically white gear that is as one crafted stuff on it and focusing more on the fact that I need three things. Like maybe I need a green, green, blue. Maybe I need a red, red, green. That's what I'm focusing on. I'm not focusing on the stats of the item. I'm also not using an alchemy or a transmute on gear before crafting on it. Because very often I'm then going to end up with life regen, thorns, and no open suffix to craft resist. So one transmute, and that's generally all you need. This is how I get resist kept as early as act two. And just by knowing that you can craft on, on white gear, because just having a ring like this with crafted res, you can get res cap very easily, even without helping Illyria. So this is a huge, huge boost at the start of league. Because very often I'll see friends that don't know what they're doing running around with just kind of unusable gear. And another good tip for summoners would be maybe you need a plus one minion gem helmet. So either if you don't have a life flask of animation, you can actually force that by finding a bone spirit shield, selling it with any rarity life flask and a orb of transmutation. This will give you a grand life flask off the novice, which is animation has like seven tiers now, but anything with the, uh, the minion grants 
minion life recovery basically is what you need then once you have that you need a blue helmet one alteration and the life flask so one alteration and then any minion life flask you could just roll the minion life flask too you don't need the shield any blue helmet and boom keeps the sockets and you got yourself a plus one minion helmet easy now what i just did with using an orb of augmentation is not what i would recommend i would instead just craft resist on it now let's talk a little bit about good leveling zones in each act just so you have a rough idea on where where is it good to farm act one is kind of whatever but prisoner's gate and then wetlands is pretty great here and also southern forest when you first got here both city of sarn and docks depending on what level you are next up here in act four pretty much nothing it is awful but if you're gonna level somewhere dry lake is good when you first get here and then comb stronghold later once we get to part one act five we are in the best leveling zone during the campaign and that is the chamber of innocence this is amazing because it has blue monsters everywhere and is a great place to just go through portal out at the end and go again so very frequently players will stay here all the way at 45 to 46 on softcore and as much as 48 to 52 on hardcore this is also a great place to make sure they have 105 all res so 105 fire 105 cold 105 lightning because you're losing 30 so really really good time to focus on your gear there and even though it might seem like isn't that going to be slowing me down a lot but doing so means that you can just rush x6 7 and 8 without doing pretty much any stop or like over leveling at all in these acts however if you do want to continue over leveling x6 the ridge is a pretty good spot for that and then later on the southern forest act 7 here we have the ashen fields and act 8 the harbor bridge is amazing especially because it's just so fast and so safe now blood aqueduct act 9 is really good but the monsters are slightly scarier here now you are in maps and you have finished the campaign and i want to share some insane mind-blowing tricks we're gonna grab this map because i have 13 of it oh, i have 16 of another one but that's fine so there is a really really good uh tip with three to one in maps and i try to say this tip a lot because it's so incredibly strong now just as a quick example to make sure you understand currency for example they aren't playing they aren't unique they don't have a unique item id like now that i put these back into the stack i'm never going to find that exact alchemy again however these maps they have a unique item id so let's say that this is map 13 this is 17 this is 24 28 etc right they all have their unique item id very important for understanding this so now let's put three here and three there now if i look at my atlas and i find overgrown shrine i can see that that is here and it is tier four if I search for tier 5, all of these maps are tier 5. And even though only two of these tier 5 maps are connected to this map, we can actually get all of them from Overgrown Shrine. They can't all drop from it, but we can sell them to get any. So the way this works is really cool. So these three, no matter what combination I put them in, will always sell for Promenade. So let's say this is like 17, 56, and 72. That'll add up to a certain other unique item ID sort of uh, and it'll always turn into promenade no matter how I put them in and the same with these three they will always sell for sure same thing no matter what combination I put them in however what if we do the threes these three here but we remove one we take one from the second stack now it sells for cells now it sells for bizarre and now it sells for bizarre again so those two are bizarre what if we switch out the middle one and do that one now it sells now it's cage and you can see that by trying out different combinations we can get pretty much well with this many you can get every map of the tier above it might not be super easy to understand but you can just play around with like different combos like this and you will be able to get every map of the tier above this refers to like the the natural tier above another thing that's extremely good to use especially close to league star is Kirik missions you get at least once per day and you can do a node that gives you two but here we have white yellow and red missions and this is what you're looking for the most now just the maps in general can be really good you can hold alt and see if they're completed and you can get a lot of completion here however you can get this which is find the stack of divination cards 
And there are loads of maps like Dungeon that drops Chains that Bind, Residence that drops Trapper Prodigy, like loads of good divination cards. I kind of want to make a video just with what maps have what good divination cards, but they do also always change them a little bit. So it's a little scary to make them right before the league. But either way, what I do is I will always look for these. So, you know, for example, lastly, Orchard has the uh, Porcupine map for sixing short bow. Uh, dungeon and cage and a few other ones like lava chamber has chains that bind which is a good six thing div card palace and residence has dapper prodigy residence is coming back in 3.18 so these are really good because you will get a full stack of the six thing divination card and some of them are pretty common particularly chains that bind i would say uh the porcupine and the dapper prodigy are quite rare to get off this but chains that bind very common to get from this I would say maybe as much as half of the times you try when you get the correct map. And another tip with Kirak is that he will sell you a bunch of maps. You can hold alt and see if you completed them. And yeah, he will just sell you a bunch of maps. And this resets every time you activate a mission. You don't need to actually finish it or complete what he wants you to. You just need to activate it. And he can sell you really good maps like uh, Cortex, etc. That's a lot of the tips and tricks I can think of for League Start. Thank you for watching. Sub if you liked the video. But more importantly, Try to die less than I do.